welcome everybody to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. Uh, this is Scott McLeod. I have the pleasure of talking with Amanda Dykes, computer science specialist at the Alabama Department of Education. Uh, she is relatively new to the job. She just started in January. And so amidst uh, her uh, early uh, on-ramp to her own profession, uh, she's now getting to deal with pandemic issues and so on. So Amanda, thanks for being here with me today. Uh, why don't you just share with us a little bit about what the State Department and maybe what your department in computer science is doing in these early days of pandemic response. Like, what are y'all up to? So in Alabama, um, so we kind of closed all the schools. Um, Hopefully, we were supposed to all go back on uh, April 6th, but they've kind of expanded it for the rest of the year. And so now, April 6th is our starting date for online learning. So everybody's just had a long uh, spring break right now. Mm -hmm. um, the, the law in Alabama, because we have so many natural disasters, um, is usually if we're in a state of emergency, that those days don't have to be made up. Um, that kind of got started a few years ago when we had 500 people die in a tornado uh, and we were trying to rebuild communities and going back to school was not a factor at that moment. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of we're used to those one week, two weeks out of school things during those times. Uh, so we're kind of just have suspended all school until then. So this week is kind of the week of getting everything ready since they all start back on Monday. Um, our department right now, um, my, I, I kind of, I fall into the career tech uh, workforce development department, mm -hmm. um, but I've also kind of fall under other departments as well since computer science kind of is a larger uh, span um, but we are right now the whole thing is getting uh, resources ready to support teachers um, resources that they can choose from not mandatory from us um, you know there has been the whole oh what do we do with the the end of the year test and the, um, the high school end of that credentialing things like that um, you know all of that kind of questions have been coming in. So we're, we're right now, actually, I'm in the middle of um, putting together a website that would be for every career tech cluster that would have um, different resources. Um, and that's kind of all, that's kind of where we are as a State Department is to give out resources to be helpful, not you have to do this. We Because there is the huge equity issue in Alabama when you're living in the state that has seven of the 10 poorest counties in the country. Um, there's a big, there's big gaps. And so, you know, we've got to kind of guide people into how can we help. Um, I have a teacher send me an email. What do I do about computer science? You know, well, here's some unplugged out activities for some of those mm -hmm. teachers. Um, I guess as being somebody that was an in instructional technology beforehand, I've had some, a lot of different people kind of connect about different things. Um, so that's kind of where we are with that. Um, yeah. Got it. So, Amanda, um, do you think that computer science lends itself more easily to sort of a remote modality of learning compared to some of these other areas? You know, I'm thinking about some of those career tech clusters that you talk about where we actually send students out into the workforce, right, to uh, engage in on-site learning with partners. You know, is computer science one of those things that's more easily moved online? Yes, def definitely easier moved online. I think a lot of the teachers were already using um, Google Classroom or Canvas as an online platform to push in out assignments in the class anyway. Yeah, um, I had a teacher just that I've known through career tech stuff that was a, um, he's a machine, precision machinery right. uh, teacher. And he's like, okay, so what do I do? And I was like, so well, let's start with simulations and let's find you some um, YouTube videos, which is district blocks YouTube videos. So I was like, okay, so now what are we going to do? <laughs> let's download them. <laughs> let's get them in a Google drive. Um, Cause he's like, what do I do? They can't touch a machine. You know, he's like the welding teacher across the street. We don't have welding machines at home. Um, so that's kind of a very, difficult uh, process. Uh, I think computer science teachers are kind of a lot more prepared because they already are pushing out assignments online. 
most of the stuff is done online. Then you, but you get into that equity issue. What about all these students who we we push computer science to be in those less affluent areas, and so it's you know you have those all finding those offline unplugged computer science activities are a lot more difficult. Right, for, for yeah. some of those advanced courses where it's not like you're working through basic logic exercises, you're doing advanced coding and, and so on. You know, I was yeah. uh, had the chance to sit in on a meeting of superintendents in Iowa last week, um, and they were talking about sort of this career tech issues as well. And, you know, they were saying that they hope that some of our industry partners, which have a lot of these simulations that they use with their own workforce, that they would find ways to open those up for, you know, secondary students, for example, to access. Um, yeah, and SREB sent out a really good uh, resource link that has a lot of simulations in it. So hopefully that would help for some of it. Um, of course, you know, it's kind of hard to push out some of these new activities. And especially like where we are, there's our state has a lot of um, students that are doing like hands-on in the industry. We have a huge uh, health science to program because um, Health science is one of our largest industries here. So, uh, if they, you know, you can put kids in the hospitals right now. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, right. you know, that is kind of a issue. Um, yeah. So, Amanda, as you think about, you know, it's early days. Like you said, you have about a week or so before, you know, you kind of launch again. Mm -hmm. um, so, as you think about the planning work and trying to serve an entire state, right? So what seems to be working well right now? Where seem to be some of the challenges or sticking points? Um, I don't know. I think people are just hungry for resources, ready to just touch it. Um, you know, I think, I think as, a, as a whole, a lot of teachers are more comfortable with Google Classroom, so we'll find ways that you can put those in there. Um, stick with things that they're used to. Mm -hmm. um, at least people are like, I got to figure out how to use Zoom. Now you have to figure out how to use Zoom. Like I had a teacher that was like, what about, you know, when I was a tech coach, that was one of my teachers. She was like, I don't know how to use Zoom. And I was like, okay, well, you know how to use Google Meet. You know how to, you know, let's, let's go back to what we know how to use. Like, right. it, let's, let's go back. Okay. Find a, YouTube, you know, use a YouTube video. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's interesting. I don't know who's joining us. So that was funny. Um, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think that's a good point, um, is that how do we get people to lean on their foundational base, right, and then add on as necessary. Um, you know, it strikes me that another need that's sort of huge right now is that as educators everywhere get flooded with resources, that um, they um, need help curating. So is that one of your key roles, you think, at the state level? Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing all day, <laughs> um, all week, is just putting putting those together. Hey, this is where the, you know, this is what we have, this is what you can use, this is what you've been using. Um, you know, I think as teachers see things coming through, they're like, oh, this, 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 just find two or three things. Um, we're trying to keep our resources smaller. Um, we don't want to give you a link for 40 resources. We want to give you a link of like 10 um, and keep it, keep it simple. Keep it, this is what you know. You know your CTSO. You know your, um, those kind of organizations. You know how to use Google. Let's keep it simple and keep it on those um, levels. Absolutely. Do you think that the State Department's going to, you talked mostly about right now, the State Department's focused more on the resource side of things and sort of helping people get launched. Do you anticipate maybe some policy waivers coming up that might be necessary? Um, yeah, and those are kind of going through. Um, I definitely don't want to speak out on all those. Of course, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be very careful. Um, you know, I, I hear things. That, but yeah, I mean, those are definitely coming through and you're seeing them at college levels too, you know, and really? you see them at the, a the AP tests. And I'm like, what do you mean? There's not going to be an AP principles test. Well, right, right, right. This is what we've been pushing all year. Right. Um, so, 
um, you know, these those things are kind of going through, and you know, they are what they are. I don't think anybody's gonna, you know, tell a kid because. I don't know. I guess everybody's different. Every district's going to be different. There are parameters that districts are going to have to work through um, and kind of do them. Yeah, absolutely. So, Amanda, we're kind of coming up on the end of our time here. Anything else you want to share on sort of these early days in Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things. We're just kind of have to sit back. Luckily, we're at one of these I don't know. We have beaches. We're spring break destination. That part gets scary. Um, you know, we're just going to kind of, I just feel like I just watch the news all the time to see what is happening in the community. I live in Birmingham, which is, you know, the larger metropolitan area with the larger number of cases with, you know, with, you know, there's, I guess, 10 hospitals within minutes of my house you know luckily we've got UAB who's pushing out a couple of tests um you know, just uh medicines and stuff like that so I guess we will all see how Alabama fares and all this yes absolutely well be safe and be well friend and take care of your right, you too family. um thanks for the time today I appreciate it and yeah. um I'll, you know, wave goodbye to all of our viewers and um, just say thanks again. All right. Thank you.